Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. So this is a relatively new release. It was one of my most anticipated reads of 2019 and it first appeared in an anticipated reads video back in January or February. And I remember coming across this book and reading about it and thinking, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. But up to that point, I hadn't heard anybody talk about it. Turns out this book is quite the sensation. Everybody that I have come across who's read it has loved it. And I loved it too. As a matter of fact, I officially have a new favorite thriller. My Lovely Wife has replaced The One by John Mars in the slot of my favorite thriller. And that's that's saying something because while I love reading thrillers, it's kind of rare that I read an amazing thriller or one that meets all of these crazy criteria that I have in my head. And it just so happens that My Lovely Wife does that. It's great. Stop what you're doing and read this book. Actually finish this video and then stop everything else you're doing and read this book. So My Lovely Wife is the story of a married couple with two teenage children. The wife is a real estate agent and the husband is a tennis coach, private lesson tennis coach. And what they're starting to realize is that the more you want to achieve in life, the more responsibility you inevitably take on. And the more responsibilities you have, the less fun life is. And so they have a lot of ambition. They want to reach a certain social standing. They, they compare themselves constantly to the economics of their peer group on top of the routine of adulthood and parenthood has kind of gotten them down. What they do to spark some excitement in their marriage is commit murder. They kill people. It excites them. It arouses them. They like the plotting and the deception and the manipulation and it makes them feel smart and it makes them feel in control and it makes them feel all of these addictive things. And so they make up their minds that this is going to be what? they do. <laughs> I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that you have to go into thrillers blind or they're unenjoyable. I don't think that that's true. I'm the type of reader that I actually like to know a lot about the books I'm about to read, regardless of genre. But in this case, I love this book so much and I want you to love this book so much that I'm not even going to risk spoiling the book for you by telling you more than that. I will tell you the things that I loved about the book as well as the things that might hold somebody else up from loving the book, but I'm not going to get into plot points or things of that nature. Just an FYI. I like to think that I do a really good job of being informative about the books that I talk about without spoiling things for you but I'm not even willing to risk it at this point. Like, I want to talk about this book more than you'll ever know, so please, everybody, please read it so that we can talk about it, but this video is not going to be where I talk about it. First and foremost, you need to know that this book is told entirely from the husband's perspective. It is told in first person, present tense, and while it does include a lot of flashbacks or a lot of backstory, I guess I can't even really call them flashbacks because it's more like he's telling you about their lives together. And so he does weave backstory into the narrative. There is still a lot at stake. You guys know that, that in order for me to love a book or in order for me to love a thriller, there has to be stuff at stake. People have to be in danger or people have to be at risk of losing something. That is very much the case in this book. And had I known going into it that it was told entirely from the husband's point of view, I might have thought that would be a downside. As it is, though, 
in actuality, I think that it works really well for the book. It makes something complicated very simple. You know, telling a complicated story through one person's point of view immediately adds mystery. You immediately have built-in mystery to your story because we don't know the intentions or the actions of other characters while we're not with them. And so I love it. I love it as a method, a writing method, a storytelling method. And I love it as the reader because it's entertaining. You get to know this character really, really well, better than any other character in the book. And you get to know the other characters in the book through his eyes. That said, as well as you know this character, Samantha Downing did not name her narrator. And I love it. If you look it up on Goodreads, you will see somebody ask the question, what is this guy's real name? And Samantha Downing herself says, I have no idea. I love it. I love it. I loved it back in Fight Club, where the main character of Fight Club does not have a name. I, I love it. He's strictly the narrator. And that is both simple and yet brilliant. Because while this character is vital and important, I mean, he's the most important character in the book. He is the character that's telling us the story. He is the character through which every event and every other character is filtered. And yet we don't know his name. I That might drive some of you insane. I love it. I think it's amazing. The writing style itself is really masterful. This is Samantha Downing's debut novel. So can we just stop for a second and think about that? Like, it is smarter than the majority of thrillers I read. It is more entertaining than the majority of thrillers I read. I've read impressive debuts. I've read impressive debuts this year. But those books are rarely thrillers. And those books are rarely delicious perfection, which is kind of what I'm thinking my lovely wife is at this point. Other things about the book that I think that you need to know going into it. These are not plot things. These are not about the actual story. But you should know that this story, while it deals with serial killers or it deals with murder, it's not graphic. You are not along for the ride. Everything that these characters do is implied or just spoken about. Otherwise, it would be a horror novel, <laughs> not a thriller. So there's nothing to fear about this book. There's also nothing um, sexually explicit. I don't, I'm not even sure there's foul language in this book, actually, now that I think about it. It doesn't need it. Like, that's what's amazing. So that's, there you go. There you have it. Like, this book doesn't need to rely on gore or graphic violence in relation to its subject matter. It doesn't need to rely on sexually explicit material to keep you interested. It doesn't need to rely on, you know, controversial language or any of that because it just is smart and good without it, which is another rarity to me. But the book itself not being about the shocking nature or graphic nature of killings is really about a couple who has decided to do this thing, this unconventional thing. And the ripple effect or ramifications of their decision, how their attraction to this wrongness ends up impacting people who have no control over the husband and wife's actions. It's not pure entertainment. This is a book that does make you think to a certain extent about the way people are being affected by the things that happen in this book. So it just has so many things going for it. And it's got something I feel like would appeal to any thriller reader in general. The uh, only other thing that I want to touch on is the surprising or twisty parts of this book whether that's really the case or not. I keep in mind, I just read a book that had so many twists in it that I was like, 
what what's happening here. I'm not going to say that my lovely wife has a ton of twists. It has one major twist for sure. And then there are a couple of little twists that I would say are probably more surprising, but one I did understand as soon as I had enough information, I knew what was happening. And that's just because probably I catalog a bunch of useless information in my brain. And so I could see it coming. I knew what these pieces when put together would become. But I think that other readers will find probably the smaller twists to be more shocking than the big twist. But that said, it's not the type of book it's not the type of book where you're trying to be surprised. It's not, I don't think this book needs to or should expect to exist on its twists. There are, obviously we know plenty of thrillers out there that have to have a, a powerful twist because there's so much, because it doesn't exceed expectations in other ways. But this book exceeds all of my expectations without even considering the twists. So I don't think readers need to go into it thinking, oh, what's the twist going to be? You know, I think it's just an enjoyable ride. Just it's an enjoyable ride. Pick up this book, sit back, relax. And if you don't love it, I will be really surprised if you watch this channel. And for the most part, you think that I am sensible or on point when I talk about books and you don't love this book, I'll, I'll be really surprised. Really surprised. This book is pff, amazing. My new favorite thriller of all time. I can't imagine it won't be my favorite book of 2019. We'll see what happens. But obviously, five stars. This is amazing. I am in love with my lovely wife, Samantha Downing. Please write another book ASAP. Thank you so much. And I hope that I fulfilled your expectations uh, by reading it as quickly as I could and telling you as much about it as I'm willing to tell you. I'll talk to you more about it once you've read it, but I don't want to even come close to damaging your enjoyment of this book at all. So just read it. It's great. I don't know what else to say. Definitely let me know what you think about it. If you have any questions before reading it um, or about anything that I may have forgotten to mention in this video, leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.